One of the films that has really come on my radar as the trailers have started to drop is the new Tom Hardy, Austin Butler film, The Bike Riders. Now, I admit, part of the reason is because Sons of Anarchy is like one of my top three all-time favorite television shows. So there's a little bit about that and where Austin Butler coming off a big Academy Award nomination for Best Lead Actor for his performance in Boz Lerman's Elvis, in which he was fantastic. You got Tom Hardy that I pretty much love him in everything. Jodie Comer, who I also think is pretty much awesome in everything. She burst onto the scene with Killing Eve and has been killing it all ever since. Well, this movie was supposed to come out December 1st. Remember the last trailer just dropped a little bit ago, December 1st, coming into theaters. Well, no, it's not. And there's two big reasons why, one of which they're acknowledging and one of which they're not. Uh, this comes us from the folks at Variety who write the following. The Bike Riders, a drama starring Austin Butler, Jodie Comer, and Tom Hardy, and directed by Jeff Nichols, by the way, he's really good, uh, has been indefinitely postponed amid the ongoing actor strike. Disney and 20th Century uh, were scheduled to open the film on December 1st, but it's been taken off the calendar for now. Recent releases such as Sony's GameStop, uh, Stock Frenzy-inspired Dumb Money, and Kenneth Branagh's Agatha Christie adaptation of A Haunting in Venice struggled at the box office, at least in part because their star-studded films couldn't get a boost from their cast on the press circuit. So you're talking about movies here, like, and I think the GameStop one is a great example of that. GameStop... Nobody went to go see it. So not GameStop. Dumb, Dumb money. money. The movie about GameStop. What a shame, too. Absolute shame. That movie was wonderful. Yep. I, I couldn't believe how much I enjoyed that movie. Mm -hmm. But nobody, and I mean nobody, went to go see it. And part of it has to be attributed to, part of it has to be attributed to, the fact that Paul Dano, who's Saturday Night Live boy, uh, played his Paul brother. Dav uh, Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson. <laughs> Nick Offerman, you know, you, you couldn't get these stars to go out and actually promote the movie, mm -hmm. and it suffered. Because if they were sending, like, clips out on, like, Fallon and Jimmy Kimmel and stuff like that, and they were promoting people, like, oh, this looks really good. Yeah, shows which weren't even on the air. Yeah. And then A Haunting in Venice was actually not very good, but it would have done a lot better if you could have had, you know, reigning Academy Award winner Michelle Yeoh and others get out there and promote the film. So... They're sitting there and say, look, we got Tom Hardy. We got three of the hottest performers out there in this movie. Tom Hardy. We got uh, uh, Jodie Comer. We got Austin Butler. I think Michael Shannon's in this movie. Uh, Norman Reedus. Norman Reedus, is, which is perfect casting for that. Norman Reedus is in the film. I mean, you've got a big, big lineup of big stars that you can send out and promote this movie. And without them being able to do it, they know it's going to hurt their box office. So they're acknowledging that. But there's one other thing that I believe is a <laughs> part of the reason why they're moving this movie and they're not talking about it. Ray, do you know what other movie is now suddenly out of nowhere supposed to open on December 1st? Uh, you, um, is it Beyonce? That's right. Whoa. The Queen. <laughs> Beyonce. And after what everybody just saw Taylor Swift did at the box office, making hundred, nearly $100 million on its opening weekend, I, I, I don't think they really... Now, don't get me wrong. If there was no actor strike right going on right now, I think they probably would keep the release date. Yeah. But you combine the actor strike with the fact that out of nowhere, they just announced when the bike riders had that release date set for a while, and out of nowhere, they announced Beyonce's going to come out and Taylor Swift just ripped it up at the box office. I think that had to play into it a little bit too. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, Rocket Money. Did you know that the average person has around 12 paid subscriptions and they might not even remember to subscribing to half of those? If you have no idea just how much you're spending each month, you need Rocket Money. It's this great app that tracks all of your expenses so you know exactly where your money is going. I recently just found out that over 80% of people have subscriptions that they've completely forgotten about. Seriously, think about how many free trials you subscribe to that you just probably never canceled. And that's why I'm such a big fan of Rocket Money because I was one of those people. When I signed up to Rocket Money, I was stunned to find out that a gym I had belonged to in another city I lived in, I had still been paying my dues to for over two years. Also, that music subscription service I use, yeah, I forgot I was subscribed to two other ones. That's where Rocket Money comes in because Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. With over 3 million users and counting, Rocket Money customers have saved on average of $720 a year. So stop 
Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash campia. That's rocketmoney.com slash campia. Rocketmoney.com slash campia. Anyway, Sean, uh, I have really come to the point that I'm looking forward to this movie quite a bit. I, I've really liked the trailers. I love the cast, obviously. I'm a Sons of Anarchy fan, so I'm a fan of the subject matter. What do you think about their decision to postpone it? Do you think maybe they could have pushed forward with the release anyway? How long do you think we're going to have to wait for it? And what's your anticipation level like for this movie? Yeah, so this is one of these ones that I'd seen the Twitter buzz around it, but I, I didn't see the trailer until I was sitting in a theater and didn't even know what trailer I was watching. I was like, oh, this is this is nice. I like this vibe. And just seeing Austin Butler in something, I was like, oh, I'm excited to check this one out. And it's actually playing at the Austin Film Festival next week, so I, I might be able to see it in about a week. But um, I, I mean, I feel like some of this is that there's just no box office momentum right now outside of Taylor Swift. Yeah. You talked about dumb money. I was ex I was interested in seeing it because of the subject matter. I loved the trailer. I didn't go see the movie. I missed it. And I talk about movies for a living. <laughs> and it was just one of those ones that kind of like fell through the cracks and they even kind of confused the release date a little bit. But when there's not kind of box office momentum of people going to the theaters and seeing trailers in front of movies and talk shows with actors on there, just the overall momentum drops that – that even that activity, that pattern of going to the movies on a regular basis starts to fade away. And this isn't going to be the movie that excites people to like go to this, the, the movies again. And it feels like that momentum's not coming back in the near future. So the idea that they can't promote it the, the ways that you normally do with actors. And then I didn't even realize the Beyonce thing, but that makes sense that they would delay it. And I would guess it won't be delayed too much if they're able to resolve the strike in the near future. It'll come out early 2024. But um, yeah, I mean, I think that Taylor Swift thing just, they, they moved an exorcist film as soon as they saw Taylor Swift was going to that. Oh, yeah. Immediately they moved it off and they were wise to do so because Taylor Swift did three times the money. And so I think there has to be some element to that of like bike riders can't even nearly compete in, in that play field. So um, it makes sense to me, but I'm excited to check it out when it happens. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campy Show podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.